Hey, it's Candace, and I'm super excited to visit with you guys. So I got another question. This uh, how to accrue sick pay in the state of California with the new law has been a serious hit with you guys. You've been loving and asking me lots of questions. So I keep creating new videos as I get new questions and keep the questions coming because I absolutely love them. So yesterday I got a question I was out and about. So I told her I would create the video today. But what she wanted to know about is she just got a new job and the previous person had not been accruing sick pay. And since the new, the California state law is as of July 1st, you're supposed to be accruing sick pay. She wanted to know what she should do. So in this original video that I created, I've actually created another one since a Q and a one that you're welcome to check out as well. But inside of here, I gave you the link to the new video. Plus I gave you a link to the state of California website to let you know the different things. They have two things you can check out. I'll click on them real quick for you. There is a Q and A where you can go in and it will let you know a lot more detail. And then they also had a webinar that they created that I think would be highly beneficial if you're new to all this to kind of figure out because there are different ways to accrue your sick pay. So there's what's called front loading where you can choose if you did it before to pre give employees up to the you know 24 hours limit or you can choose to do it accrue it per hour that they work so it's up to you in here right here is the webinar on the second link and on the first link here is all the q and a's so right here if i click on if I qualify how much sick pay, it tells you right in here, you get one hour for every 30 hours worked. All right, so let's go and I'm gonna show you what you do inside of QuickBooks. So you're gonna go into your employee and you're gonna go in and we're actually gonna adjust each employee's sick pay. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go into reports, employees and payroll, payroll summary. And what I want you to do is pick the period of time from July 1st when the law went into effect and you should have started accruing sick pay. As long as the people qualify, which it tells you here, it, what they have to do to qualify, it has all the information in here. How do I qualify for sick pay? You know, you work on or after January 1st of 2015 for at least 30, within a year in California, and you satisfied your 90 day pre-employment probationary time period. Go ahead and read through this or as I said, go through the webinar. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in and you're gonna pull the report by employee. And you're gonna see right here, if they're not, this is a salary employee in my example, but yours will be hourly and there should be an hourly amount here. So what you're gonna do is when you're setting up, if you watched the previous video, I taught you how to set it up. So when you're in here and you click on this little mouse for the edit and you go over here under payroll info, and then you click on six slash vacation, you'll see that there is a calculation and it's 0 0.0333 for every hour they worked will give you for 30 hours, one day sick. And if you work 40 hours, it's 1.3. So what you would do is you would pull up your report and you would see all of the sick pay. So let me show you that again. Right here, you'll see the hours. So what you would do is, for an example, I'm gonna go and pull up a calculator here. You, let's say that they worked on average 30 hours a week for six weeks or 180 hours. Then you would multiply that by 0 0.03333 and that would give you, it's doing it just under six hours. So I would adjust that to six hours sick pay, meaning for every 30 hours somebody works per the law, they they can get one sick pay. Now there's, there's a few different things like front loading that you can adjust for. There was also something you could do so that they could only get up to 24 hours, but all those things needed to be done by July 1st and the employees needed to be notified before the law took effect as of July 1st. So I'm assuming don't know for sure that that wasn't taken care of. So what you would need to do is you would figure out their hours, whatever their hours are for that period of time, you would multiply it by 0 0.033. And then that would tell you their sick pay, how much sick pay, then you go into the employee. So what you're going to do is go into the employee center, I'll show you what you do, go into the employee center, select each individual employee, click the little edit button, 
payroll info, six slash vacation pay. And what you're gonna wanna do is up here in the very front, whatever your last payroll was processed, whatever the date was, will be showing up in here. So the last payroll that I processed in this example was July 31st. So what I would do is as of whatever date this says, figure out what the last payroll was, figure out how many hours should have been paid, and then put it in here. So in this example, we said it would be six hours if they had worked 30 hours a week. Assuming it's been six weeks, I'm recording this in August, it's August 14th today. So that's four weeks in July, and I'm just doing two weeks in August at 30 hours a week, gives them 180 hours, and then I'm multiplying that by the point 0333, and it's giving them six hours basically of sick pay. So you'd put six hours here. And then depending on what you guys, had, if you decided to cap their, sick, cap their sick pay at 24, and then make sure you check with the law whether they have a max or not with your company. If they have no max, you could technically zero it out. And then you would leave the 0 .033 to keep track of in the future. Then you would decide when you're resetting it. Does it reset at January? Does it reset in July? When ever that date range is for the future, you can reset it. Now, in my last video, I explained to you if it's rolling over from year to year, at the end of the year, you are gonna go under reports, employees and payroll, and then you're gonna go down to sick paid time off. And it would let you know how much was available, how much they have used. You can then take the amount that they have available and the new beginning of the next year and put it up here to roll it over instead of having it reset. In my example, I was saying going through the current date, but you wanna make sure you're actually looking at what date it's saying available sick pay here. Every, you just wanna make sure that the date you pull up on this on your report matches what you've been paid what they've been paid through here. So if this is July 31st, what I actually really wanna make sure I make clear to you is that the date you're picking, even though this is saying the 14th, it's really only pulling payroll through the date that it's showing on the other one, because that's the last payroll check. But just make sure that whatever is the last paycheck that's showing up actually in the employee center is the last paycheck that you're, you realize you're actually calculating against. So whatever date this says, that's the last paycheck. So just pick from July 1st through whatever this date is so that you can calculate it correctly. And then in the future, on the next paycheck, which I'll show you right now, it will adjust for anything from this paycheck through to the next paycheck. It will actually start accruing it. So let me show you how to actually, what it will look like on the check. Payroll, start scheduled payroll, or unscheduled I actually clicked on. Select the employees. And what you'll notice is depending on what you put in here, he has six available. If you put in that he worked 30 hours, this is a salary person, it now gives them available seven. Then if you save and close it, you would have your previous payroll and anything that was on the current check and moving forward. And it will print on their paycheck stub. It will print on their, all of their sick pay if you go in under the employee and add it into the area I told you. So I hope that answered your question. If you know anybody who could benefit from this, please share it. And if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and like this video. I'll see you guys next week. I'm loving your questions. So please, please, please don't hesitate to ask me a question. I love creating these videos for you guys. Talk to you next week.